I've always wanted to build a rocket that would break the sound barrier. I just never knew when or how. That is, until I finished a roll of aluminum foil and found that the cardboard tube was exactly 29 millimeters in diameter. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's go break the sound barrier. A 29 millimeter motor is the perfect size motor to build a simple and small supersonic rocket. There are many potentially supersonic motors to choose from, but they aren't so big that you need a high power certification. First, I modeled the body tube in open rocket and tested different fin sizes and different amounts of nose weight. The final design looked like this. The stability margin had to be higher than normal because supersonic flight makes rockets less stable. The stability margin is measured in calibers and is the distance between the center of pressure and the center of gravity divided by the diameter of the rocket. Normally, a stability margin of 1 is fine, but according to an Apogee Components newsletter I read, it should be at least 2.25 for a supersonic rocket. This is why the fins look pretty big, to move the center of pressure down and farther away from the center of gravity. There was also about 4 grams of nose weight, which was able to bring the stability margin to 2.26. Both the fins and the nose cone are 3D printed. We're using a standard Estes elastic shock cord and a 2x56 mylar streamer from Apogee Components. First, we had to attach the fins to the body. I 3D printed a fin alignment jig, which made aligning the fins super easy. I then individually painted the nose cone and the body with the fins red, then attached a streamer and the shock cord to both to finish the rocket. The whole construction took only about a day. I decided to call this rocket Mach Machine, or just Mach Een. Pretty clever, huh? The motor we chose to use is the Aerotech G80 Blue Thunder with a 7 second delay. We're basically putting the largest motor possible without a level 1 certification it's almost the smallest rocket possible, which is just insane. Or in the words of our launch operator, That should be interesting. According to the open rocket simulations, the rocket would get up to Mach 1.18, which is well above the speed of sound. So if the rocket flew straight up, I would consider it to be faster than the speed of sound. We also use the fly away rail guide to reduce drag. It's basically a rail guide, but it flies off when it leaves the rail because of these rubber bands. We launched again at the Lunar Rocket Club. The weather was okay. It was partly cloudy, which made it hard to see the rockets, but it wasn't super windy and the sun was still visible. Setup was quick and easy, and we ended up being the first mid-power launch of the day. The rocket was just way too fast for two of our three videos to keep in frame. This is the only video of the rocket losing control. Unfortunately, this was also the only video not in slow motion, but here's a zoomed in frame by frame version. As you can see, in one frame all the fins are still intact, and in the next, somehow they all got blown off. The rocket then loses control and starts spinning while the motor is still firing, which throws the nose gun and streamer off. Everything was recovered except for one of the fins being broken, and only pieces of the fourth fin were found. This is crazy because these 3D printed fins are pretty hard to break. They're very bendy as you can see here. So why did this happen? Originally, before we watched any of the videos, we thought it was because of the crazy acceleration of 55 G's on the thin attachment area of the fin. Maximum acceleration only happens to max thrust though, and as you can see by this graph, max thrust is pretty constant. Next, we thought the attachment of one of the fins somehow got weak, which spun the rocket around and put large loads on the other fins. But when we watched the video, we could clearly see all four fins disconnected at the same time. The rocket even flew straight for one more frame before losing control. Next, I thought this was caused by the flyaway rail guide hitting the fins at really high speeds. But as you can see from this video, the guides disconnect well before the fins break off. We also thought this may have been caused by the high air resistance encountered when objects get near the sound barrier and break through, which are huge loads. I opened the edit mode of the video to analyze the exact time of the launch and the fins breaking off. It looks like the fins break off at around a third of a second after launch. I then checked the simulation data and found that the rocket should only be traveling at around 400 miles per hour at this timestamp, which is not nearly at supersonic speeds. According to the sim, the rocket would reach supersonic speeds at around 0.75 seconds into flight in 50 degree weather, so we weren't really that close. Another theory I have is that the motor was pushing too much upwards on the fins. The fins were aligned right at the bottom of the rocket, and the motor has a lip called an engine block to keep it from flying through the rocket. The engine block didn't look like it was contacting the fins when we were setting up for flight, but it was definitely close. That little to no contact was probably increased once you put in a few dozen g-forces. Unfortunately, we have no way to verify this, but we'll continue investigating and we'll post any updates we have. 
If you have any theories on why this happened, please comment down below. Feel free to ask any questions. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to not miss the next fun video about another supersonic rocket. See you then.